What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to another one of these tips and tricks videos. This time it's going to be all about building a canal just like this one I'm currently standing on. So without further ado, let's jump on into the video. Okay, so when it comes to building a canal, it is very much just a box in the ground filled with water. There's obviously more technical terms to it and it's probably called a channel rather than a box, but we'll go with a box for now. Anyway, on the screen now you can see the actual profile I have made for my canal itself. I've split it out into several different parts. So let's start at the top and work our way down. So on either sides of the top, which is actually the bit that's going to stick above ground, you have got the towpaths. So they are four blocks wide with two bits of grass on either side and two bits of grass path on the center. Now moving in from those, we have the red sections of wall, which are five blocks high. But if you count the little bottom bit, that's actually six blocks high. And that is the walls of the canal. The reason I've shown them here as red is because later on in this video, I'll show you how I like to paint things with world edit to actually give it a nice texture. So the green sections are all about making it feel like a more V-shaped channel, so it has a bit more life to it. So when you actually look into the channel itself, it doesn't look like it's just a boring square. And then of course we have the base down the bottom. Now that is 17 blocks across if you include the two actual walls, but the blue section itself is 15 blocks wide. So that's how much space you have in your canal to fit a couple of boats in there. So let's go on up to it and have a quick little look at it. Um, it's quite nice, quite large. You can definitely fit this in your world quite nicely. Now, what you can see over there is the walls of some canals, and that is what we're gonna move on to next. This here is the canal lock. So this is my own design. I've devised it while building that beautiful canal over there that I showed you a second ago. And I love it, and I think it works really well. So it's quite rudimental, quite basic. There isn't too much to it, but what you do have is a schematic for it in the downloads below. So if you are using world edit yourself, you can actually take this and load it into your world. And if you have a lovely little spot like this, you can stand here and then copy and paste it end to end. And what that gives you is a flight of locks, which is the technical term for it. Not a flock of birds, but a flight of locks. I know it sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? And that gives you a nice rising uh, ability to get your canal boats up from one place to another. Because on canals, if you have waterfalls, let's call them, where water is going down, or maybe even a weir, yeah, boats don't like that. And boats really don't like that. So we're going to get on to actually showing you how big this is in total. Uh, across the front here, let's just use some world edit to measure this out. So you've got 28 blocks of usable space in here. Sorry, 29 blocks, but because it has a seal in here, technically you don't really want your boat over this when it's filling up because it can get trapped and it can get damaged. And it's the same for when the boat goes in here and it sits at the back. If it gets caught on the seal, oh no, it's going to fall in, go upside down, and everyone's going to drown. That was quite morbid. I don't know why I said that. But anyway, so what you actually want to do is measure it from this side of the seal. So you've actually got yourself 26 blocks in there. And that is, you know, you can make that bigger, you can make that smaller. I'll show you when we get into the tutorial guide section uh, exactly how I built them anyway. So we come onto the main section of the lock now. This is the actual main door. So these are what hold the water in or let the water out. And you have to open it using these top sections here. So across the top, we have 11 blocks of black terracotta. I like the way it has a little bit of a brown tinge to it helps blend with the dark oak down below. On top of those, we have two slabs or half slabs of polished diorite, and this acts as a little white tip on the end. If you look at any pictures of UK uh, locks, they always have that on it. And then we've got the actual door itself. So this is eight blocks down here of stripped dark oak with five blocks across like that. And then in between here, we have placed in some fences of dark oak as well to act as a sort of little bit of detail. Along the back here, you do have the moving or the actual hinge or I guess the axle, and that's just uh, unpolished andesite walls all the way from top to bottom there. Now you may be wondering, hang on, so over there you have a different height. Now this height is dependent on how high up you wish to make your locks. So I've gone for three blocks up, so that means we're three blocks different on the ground level here. So this door itself is only five blocks high, six if you include the actual moving section. So we come on now to the other part of the actual lock, which is a bit more interesting than just different sizes of wall. As you can see here, these walls just sort of bend in like a little cone, go into a flat section. It's fairly straightforward. This, on the other hand, is what gives you a bit more detail to it. So this is the little foot crossing bridge. Now I've used uh, polished diorite again to keep the same motif here. And those are two, a half slab and a slab. At this section as well, we've got uh, nine blocks across like that 
of a stripped darko which matches the doors and that is just helping you cross and then across here as well we have a whole line of uh, dark oak fences and dark oak fence gates you've got the fences looking like that on the side and the same over here and that is there that's all there is to that it's fairly simple but i think it looks really quite effective so i'm going to move on now to showing you guys the next part which is this lovely boat over here it's like it's all planned wasn't it when i turned around then but this is a nice little barge i've built uh, it's got some bricks in the front just making it look a bit more industrial and again it's not a very interesting build it's not a very it's a little bit basic, but I think it works well for what we're trying to go for here. When you've got boats on this size and this scale, you can't really get too much detail into it. Hang on. Is it dripping? Yeah, it seems to have water inside the hull. Oh dear. Um, but anyway, this is also included within the download pack, so you guys can get your hands on this one to help copy and paste into your world, change up the cargo inside, and do what you wish with it. So, I need to show you guys now how it looks out in the actual wild. On that ridge over there, we have a canal going up onto an aqueduct so let's go take a look over there okay so over here i have for you a test world full with some lovely canal paraphernalia right now what you're looking at is a flight of three canal locks going up here in a sort of nice little hill ending in what i like to call an aqueduct i don't like to call it an aqueduct it is actually an aqueduct uh, not obviously a roman aqueduct but a more modern slash victorian one so starting down this end you can see i've actually got a little bit of a curve going off here I'm going to show you guys in the guide how to build that as well and that just helps bring a bit more realism uh, obviously last time if you haven't already seen it go check out my video on how to build realistic railways using a similar technique as well but yes so we got this leading up here you've got the towpaths either side and a bit of a nice scattered landscape bit bit barren bit quite you know full of full of some bushes and some trees and stuff so it does have a nice feel to it now the actual main article itself is obviously this lock and all of the other locks going off in the distance there do you know what i love this view so much there's a picture that keeps popping up on my instagram to deal with the canal trust here in the uk uh they're a charity that run it and if you see they always show pictures of like four or maybe even 30 locks going up in a flight and it is just one of those amazing looks of sort of a georgian industrial sort of period anyway so we walk on up here you've got some canal boats going through you've got the locks and obviously this is how they work so one side gets filled up while the other is still empty the boats go in doors close behind them the doors close and then obviously this gets filled up by opening a sluice gate somewhere i haven't included that just for you don't really need that extra little bit of realism boats come back up to this level these gates open and then through you go rinse and repeat and then rinse and repeat again so you've got this boat going in to this lock right now and so on the surface really they are quite simple things to do but ultimately it brings so much to your world once you have one in you can get a nice little proper industrial feel to it or you can have it in a nice idyllic sort of countryside like i've got here rolling hills and lovely trees about the place now the canal opens up here into a straight section and it carries on across this river and the road spanning over on a beautiful beautiful aqueduct so this is a huge big metal iron girder aqueduct uh, it's not very detailed not very interesting but i built it just for the sole purpose to show you that you can put canals over more water and also over roads as well and i think this whole thing has come together really really nicely and i can't wait to see what you guys end up doing yourselves now it's time to jump into the tutorial guide uh, so it's a bit more of just a time lapse guide me showing you how i built this and giving you some ideas on how you can build your own so let's jump on into that okay so the first step i took was to draw a curve onto the ground to follow to make the actual curved section of the canal now you can do this using the convex tool along with the curve command in world edit but also you can draw it out by hand as well so on the ground now you're going to see a black curve appear from this black curve i've done spines either side of the center line in green wool now each of these are seven blocks wide and that gives you your 15 block base Along the edges, I've actually included some red there to start off showing where the walls are going to go. And this carries on every change in direction as you go up the curve. Now, like I said, you can do this all with World Edit or you can do it all by hand. I did a lot of this with World Edit just because it is such a handy tool, especially when we come to painting on the textures for the walls and the floors in a later section of this. So now all the red walls in place, it's time to stack that up by four blocks so you get a nice five block high wall. Now I've done this all in red wall again, as I showed you earlier on with the actual thing as well. And that was just a great idea to do because now we can go through and paint that all up using a uh, brush tool, which is now set to uh, mask only red blocks with 
uh, stone bricks, mossy stone bricks, and andesite. Now you can do this, and it'll give you a nice, lovely effect like you spray painted the walls. Okay, so we're moving on to the next step now, which is actually placing in the dirt channel. So this gives you that V shape that I mentioned earlier on, and it's four blocks off from the wall, and then it's up, step, stepped in by one block, stepped in again by one, and so it goes up four blocks high as well. Now this carries on the entire length of the canal, and it gives you a nice little feature piece. So like I said, when you look into the canal, you can see it has a bit more of a channel rather than just being a flat bottomed box, as I called it earlier on. So this goes through and the next step is actually to get the ground in. At the moment we're looking at some grass with some wool on it. It's time to change that up all to coarse dirt. And once that's changed up the coarse dirt, the next step would be to paint all of the coarse dirt with red. So once you've painted it all in red, you can then go back through and paint all the red with a mixture of coarse dirt, brown mushroom blocks, and brown wool. So once you've done that, you've got yourself a nice, lovely looking canal, which actually has a really nice dirty look to it. I know, dirty canal. So the next step is actually to place on the back piece. This is so the water doesn't fall out. And I did this because this is the end of my canal. So now we need to get on to actually placing in the towpaths. So as I said before, the towpaths are four blocks wide. They have a block either side of the middle section of grass path of grass. So you do that all the way up the edge of the canal. So you've got some grass up there. Then it's the grass path followed by the actual bit of grass on the outside. I'm just putting a little bit of texture into the paths now as we speak by changing them to red and painting them with some other little bits and pieces. Okay, so we come on to the next step here, which is the actual lock. What you can see on the ground now is me placing a sort of funnel type cone. And that is just because I'm taking the size of the canal down from 15 blocks to 10 blocks wide. And this is because when we build doors later on, you'll see they have a two block center in order to create quite a nice effect when you do it on a diagonal. Now the dinner bone sort of dog bone shape I'm doing here is to show you where the doors would sit against the walls. So you've got little indents there. And also on the screen now you can see the andesite walls I've placed in there to act as the sort of axles. You can do this whatever way you want. I've made sure that each side is sort of even, but um, because of the fact it's going from an odd to an even, you do have to have one side slightly longer than the other in terms of how many breaks it has in it. What you can see now is I'm placing some blue wool on top of the red wool. The red wool indicates the actual change in the level, so that's three blocks high, where the blue wool indicates the original size or the height of the canal, which was the five blocks. So in total at this point, the canal lock is now eight blocks high. And this is replicated when we get around to building the doors because the door on the lower side is, has to be eight blocks of dark oak. And on top of that, you have the one block thick terracotta. So what I'm doing is going through and placing all the ground with uh, coarse dirt. And that is just because we can change it up later on like we did previously where we turned it all to red. Now, what I'm doing is just making sure the channel fits in here. Within the actual lock itself, there is no dirt up against the side, which makes perfect sense when you think about it because you don't want to get that trapped inside the mechanism. What I'm doing also is adding in some reinforcements on the base of the lock. And now this is just some dark oak I've placed at three block centers. And I think it looks quite smart as a way of doing a sort of reinforcement section. As I've mentioned, this is definitely a guide for you guys to take away some ideas on how to build them yourselves. Don't take this as a prescribed tutorial because I'm not going to slow down any point to stop. But anyway, so we're going to get on to actually showing you the door now. This is eight blocks high uh, by five blocks wide, and it is just uh, stripped dark oak. And on top of that, you've got some black terracotta I've used, 11 blocks along there. And on top of that, we place two pieces, two slabs of polished diorite to act as sort of little indents. And also inside the middle there, I've added some stairs, some fences to make it look a bit more detailed. So we rinse and repeat this on the other side, and there we go, it's sitting in its little indent. Now, what I'm doing here is building the sort of gradient that takes you up from our original ground level to the new ground level. So I'm going along and adding um, steps in there. So we've got it going from one block high up to two, then up to three, and that gives you an idea of how we've changed in level. So coming round to the second door, this one's on an angle, so you need to place it at 22 and a half degrees, which is two blocks and then another two blocks behind at a diagonal. And on top of that, you place the black terracotta to act as the handles. And I think this looks great. So that is the lock pretty much done. You need to carry on the towpath up either side. It does actually extend to about four blocks wide at this point because we need to have some space to allow the door to open and close with the arm. 
and also it, the horses we need to go around at this point as well yes this is when uh, canals were actually guided by horses still rather than a uh, steam power or diesel so it's quite an interesting time but yeah so once you take it out to four blocks wide you bring it back down to its original size of two once you get past the whole lock mechanism and that gives you a nice sort of effect with the path so the next stage is to go through and paint up the walls using a brush uh, set to a sphere of stone bricks and also mossy stone bricks along with some andesite as we've done previously. So the mask is set to blue and red so you can go through and paint up the whole walls all at once and this gives you that nice sort of textured effect to it. Now the next thing to do is to go on and do the same with the floor so we take out a brush and paint up all of the coarse dirt with red again and then once we've done that we can go back through and safely paint up all of that with coarse dirt brown wool and also some brown mushroom blocks to give you that nice sort of muddy effect we've got going on on the rest of the canal so that is the canal lock completely finished apart from the final bit here which is the little footpath across so you guys can get between one side and the other and open up the lock gates so you're not left hanging around or walking to the closest bridge so only thing left after this is to rinse and repeat building this lock uh, maybe four five times i'm going to do it just three times here so i've copied and pasted it and as i mentioned before you have this in your sort of downloads for this so you can go through and add that into your world and copy and paste it between wherever you want it so all we've got to do now is go through and landscape the entirety of this build so let me show you guys how i've done that so the rest of the canal lock is going in so we've got our three locks here in this flight and after that it's time to get on with the last bit of the actual canal before we move on to the fully landscaping section now this is a straight section of the canal which actually will go across on the aqueduct and it's also where i devised the section for the canal from so you can see here i'm placing in the different colored walls now which we're going to stack along here about 30 to 40 blocks which will give you this nice little section like that the reason i've done different colored walls is as you've seen throughout this video you can go through and use a mask on your brush with weld edit to change only those blocks uh, specifically and also having different colored walls like this makes it look quite neon and interesting and it gives you an idea of exactly what it's going to look like so moving on now to actually getting the landscape in i chose to do a little aqueduct across a small little road at first with just a simple bridge abruptment and also just having it as a sort of nice iron girder bridge but then i decided to go a bit bigger i thought this was looked a bit small a little bit piddly so i went hang on let's put it over not only a road but also a river and so it looks a bit more interesting a bit more stronger now you know it gives that really nice industrial feel to it so the final part is to come along and actually build in the hill that this, hit, uh, this canal is sitting on so to do this i've just used cylinders of grass at different varying sizes to make it look like a nice landscaped contoured land and i just went and copied and pasted that onto the other side blended it in a little bit and then went across and added some trees so guys this has been my little tutorial slash guide on how to build this canal you can go away and have a go at building them yourself now and i cannot wait to see what you guys come up with so let's jump back into the world and i'll say my goodbyes so guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching that. I've enjoyed giving you this lovely guide on how to build canals to make your world feel a bit more industrial, a bit more Victorian, and a bit more just special. So let me know in the comments below if there's any more guides you'd like to see me do. I enjoy doing these tips and tricks series because there is just so much I can show you guys. So please let me know in the comments below. So anyway guys, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.